All right, I haven't made a cooking video for a while, so I'm a bit rusty, but I'm gonna give this a go. It's gonna be pretty much out there, and I'm not really gonna be following any recipe, but I wanted to make a meatloaf, and I didn't have any breadcrumbs, so I'm gonna make a Sultana brand curried meatloaf. With my own herbs from the garden, I'm gonna add in a bit of carrot, uh, some tomatoes with some juiciness, extra sultanas ripened on the vine and some shredded coconut um, and then I'm just going to add a couple of tablespoons of some wholemeal flour to bind it all together with an egg as well and then because I had a whole cauliflower I'm going to make cauliflower cheese as well so I've parboiled this cauliflower um, just basically steamed it just to where it turned opaque. You don't want to cook it any more than that because it's going to be cooked in the casserole dish. <clears throat> then I'm going to make a bechamel with, uh, um, make a roux first with the butter and the plain flour. Get that going, put the milk in and then the cheese. And then for some flavorings, uh, mustard, because mustard always goes well with cheese. Some fennel salt that I got as a gift for Christmas and nutmeg. Nutmeg always goes with the uh, cauliflower. And then skipping around a bit for the glaze for the meatloaf, I've decided to do a bit of a combination of tomato sauce, peri peri sauce, Worcestershire sauce and maple syrup. And that'll be the glaze for on top of the meatloaf. And the meatloaf, I'm gonna line the bottom of the tin with eggplant that I just picked. I'm gonna chop up the herbs, grate the carrot, chop up the tomatoes, put it all in with the mince, add in the sultana bran and the coconut and the Rogan Josh curry spice. Uh, and then, bind it together with the egg and the flour and see how that works in the tin. So, sorry about the lighting, it's not too good, but I just really wanted to make this cooking video and I thought it'd be interesting to see someone make a Sultana brand curried meatloaf with cauliflower cheese. So stay tuned, I'm gonna put this, start putting this together now. All right, to make the white sauce, I've put a big chunk of butter, some olive oil and a couple of tablespoons of flour, probably a bit more actually, and um, get that all going together, stir it up, which will make you a roux. And then you add the milk and later the cheese and lastly the spices, but I'll get it going now. All right, so that's going nicely now, almost to the point of ready to put the uh, milk in. You wanna cook the flour off so there's no floury taste, but just, uh, yeah. And you don't want it to go too much or it'll turn, turn brown or dark. So I'm gonna get the milk and add that in. All right, that's bubbling away nicely. And just add straight cold milk slowly and stir as you go. That's the first bit of milk. Stir it in. Might have to put the camera down and focus. <laughs> I guess I can keep doing it. All right. More milk. So keep stirring that up slowly. Lower the heat right down. And you'll eventually get a white sauce, which uh, obviously you want to add some cheese in there and the spices. So I'll show you when I get to that part and we'll resume from there. Okay, this white sauce is thickening up nicely. Nice and thick and nice and rich and we've got grated cheese here. Save a bit of the grated cheese for the, uh, the top of the cauliflower cheese. Uh, you could add bread crumbs on there too, but again, I don't have bread crumbs, and that's why I'm using raisin bran for my meatloaf. Yep, this is thickening up really nicely. A bit 
more cheese. Oh, spilled a bit. All right, that's really thickening up very much. You can always add water in if it gets too thick. And then in terms of the spices, nutmeg has to go with white sauce, a bit of mustard, hot English mustard. Mustard goes with cheese sauce. Pop that in. And just for the extra twist, bit of fennel salt. There we go. And as you can see, that's really thickening up. So I might even add a little bit of water so it can flow over the, uh... oh, we're gonna have some cracked pepper with the uh, electric grinder. Oh, very nice. All right, I'm gonna Go over to the cabbage and we'll resume there. Cabbage. <laughs> Cauliflower. All right, we've got our parboiled cabbage. Cabbage. Cauliflower. <laughs> uh, looking very good. I just need debating whether to slice it or just break break apart the, the flowerettes. But um, yeah, I'll do that with two hands. So see how it goes. Okay. Ended up pretty much slicing, chopping up the broccoli. <laughs> Alright, pretty much ended up slicing the cauliflower up into uh, slices, bite-sized chunks, shall we say. And the uh, sauce is looking really good. Perfect kind of smooth, silky consistency. So now we'll do the deed by pouring it over the lusciousness. Oh, this is harder looking at the camera not at the actual thing it'll all even out in the end anyway because i'm going to bake it now so it'll all bake itself down and get very nice so yep yeah, this is my cauliflower cheese all there together beautiful I'll scrape that out, add the bit of cheese on the top, pop it in the oven, we'll be good to go. Okay, we've got it all docked it up, another bit of, bit of pepper on there, with the automatic grinder, there we go. Alright, alright, now we'll pop it in the oven. And get cracking with the meatloaf. So I'll start prepping some of this and then we'll get back to it. Okay, so this is where I'm at now, putting together the meatloaf. Uh, I'm hoping it's all going to fit in that dish. I've sliced my freshly harvested eggplant, yeah, garlic and chili, got it, chopped the tomatoes, uh, grate the carrot. Chop up the herbs, put them in. Extra, some extra sultanas along with the uh, sultana brand, not too much, just to bit bulk it up a bit, as well as a couple of tablespoons of flour and the uh, all important curry powder. And then an egg to bind it. So we'll start cracking with that, so to speak. Okay, we've got the mince and some grated carrot the curry powder, garlic, chili, and the eggplants in the bottom. So now we just need to add, which I guess is the key mystery ingredient, the Sultana brand. I don't want to add too much. Hang on, I don't want to add too much because I'm going to go over the top. Put it in there, I don't know, probably about a cup maybe. We want it to fit in there, so we won't do too much more. Um, we'll get that minching now with the egg, and then I'll add in the flour. I'm going to need both hands, so I'll go with that. Okay, we pretty much got everything in there. All the ingredients jammed in there together. 
And now I just need to mince it up, which is done by hand. So there's the egg. I can feel the bran <laughs> crunching in there. <laughs> this is quite a unique recipe. Oh, I can smell the curry powder coming up now. Yeah, it doesn't actually look too, too different. I guess it does in a way. It's unique, one of a kind thing. I did look it up on the internet and someone has made a meatloaf with raisin bran. So it's been done before. I didn't really look and see the, uh, the ingredients or the quantities or anything like that or even how they do it. I've just purely eyeballed it. And it actually, uh, so far, it's looking okay. Got the chunks of tomato in there. I wonder if it's gonna fit in there anyway. We'll make it fit. Let's see how we go. Last little bit of herbs to go on the top. So just start packing in. Now I did um, I did olive oil the oh that actually looks perfect olive oil the, the uh, eggplant in the bottom oh, sorry my camera works atrocious I have to set up my tripod I think for my cooking videos I get some better lighting in there pretty good pretty nicely situated and now I'm gonna turn my attention to the glaze although I think that'll only go in once it's been in for a little while let it start cooking and then I'll add the glaze in after that all right just wash the hands and get ready to put it in the oven sultana brand meatloaf with curry okay there's the meatloaf Put a bit of extra curry patty on the top and some bay leaves and the uh, cauliflower cheese is starting to look pretty tasty. So we'll put that in there. And not too fussed about how long or anything like that. Just when it looks ready. More, I think, slow, slow cooking. Oh, it's coming back to me. There we go. Not too fussed about the time, like I said. Just some slow cooking when it's done, it's done. And I'll add the glaze onto the top of the meatloaf here in a half an hour or so. See you soon. Anyway, okay. All right, here we go. It's been about half an hour, I'd say. Admission here, I did take the cauliflower cheese out because it was a way ahead. I, I did that first, obviously. And I've covered up the meatloaf with the foil to help it cook. Now I'm going to take that off and see what it looks like. Yeah, looks pretty good to me. And now I've got the sauce, or the glaze, sorry, that I've made with peri peri or tomato sauce, Worcestershire sauce, peri peri and I can't remember now, one other thing. <laughs> All right, here we go. Pour it over the top. Looking pretty good to me. Bugging me, I can't think of what the other thing was. Peri peri tomato sauce, wish to try sauce. something else oh. I'll add it in later when we come back I'll figure it out so I reckon that is gonna have to go uncovered probably another 20 minutes or so and uh, come back and see how it's going all right, sneak peek. Can you see the bubbling? 
Well, look at it bubbling. It's going to be pretty tasty. Okay, and the final reveal. Oh, steam got the camera. But look at the bubbling. Oh, you got it. You, you can't show me that looks. It doesn't look really good. I reckon. Okay. Gently take it out. Here it is. We got that out, and uh, cauliflower cheese looking fantastic. Curried Sultana brand meatloaf looking pretty good too. With a glaze, I remember what the mystery ingredient for the glaze was, it was maple syrup. So tomato sauce, peri-peri sauce. Oh, we also call ketchup, tomato sauce, ketchup, peri-peri sauce, Worcestershire sauce, and maple syrup. And in the cauliflower cheese, that was flavored with mustard, fennel salt, and nutmeg. And again, the meat life, ketchup, tomato sauce, ketchup or tomato sauce, peri-peri sauce, Worcestershire sauce, and maple syrup. I think we're going to serve it up now. I've got to say I'm pretty happy with that. Very good effort on my behalf for just making it up. You know, that's all you got to do, have some confidence. There you go, it's made. I to mention I'm going to be serving it with uh, authentic South African Mrs. Ball's flavoured chutney. Chakalaka flavoured chutney. With the meatloaf. It's almost the Mandela's meatloaf, which is a babuti, which is a little bit different. Use a lot more egg, more curry powder, and um, otherwise it's a similar kind of meatloaf. But the chutney sounds like a good idea. There it is all together. Chutney. Cauliflower cheese. Curried Sultana brand meatloaf. That's dinner. All right. You stay till the end. You're going to watch the dissecting now. How thick a slice. <laughs> Slice, 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 slice. There we go. Oh, Twiggy. Twiggy, come here. You want some meat life? Come here. Sit. 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 You like meat life, don't you, Twig? <laughs> Good girl. All right, and you can see it's just come straight out. Got the eggplant in the bottom. Might need two hands to serve the rest of it up. And the cauliflower cheese, not too, uh, still nice and textured because I didn't, I parboiled it, took it out, and it only had about 20 minutes or maybe half an hour in the oven. Oh, look at that. Thing of beauty. Succulent, succulent beauty. <laughs> and now we can serve up some of the cauliflower cheese. Nice big chunk there. Oh, aim the camera properly. Here we go. Cheesy sauce. Mm. Hey Tree, very exciting. Get some uh Greenery, a little bit there. This can go there. Now we'll put some chutney on, take some stills, be good to go. Time for a close up. There we go. And the finished product. Pretty happy with that. That is my spare of the moment. Curried raisin, raisin bran or sultana bran meatloaf with traditional cauliflower cheese 
served with Mrs. Ball's chutney. Pretty damn special if you ask me. Well folks, that's it. All that remains is to eat. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for more food videos. Hoping to do my pesto, pick the uh, basil in the garden and put it together in my traditional way. So stay tuned for that. And uh, I'll uh, give this rating, this dinner rating in the, uh, in the, in the description afterwards. And Tweety, I'm sure, whoop, we'll get a little piece too. See you later. Thanks for watching, folks. All right. I couldn't let you go without actually showing you and reporting just how good this is. So moist, so juicy, so spicy. Mm. Fantastic. I'd have to rate this. The, um... The coconut stands out. You can't really taste the uh, salta the sultana bran at all, or the or the couple of teaspoons of whole whole wheel flour. But it's just got a real softness to it, beautiful, soft, juicy, and of course the uh, cauliflower cheese goes without saying. It's fantastic. So yeah, happy to have uh, made this for you tonight, and I'd give it two thumbs up.